for the first two days, we were, we were really good. Um, uh, day one, um, what do we know, day four, um, most of day three were really good. And then um, I thought we didn't bat well enough in that last session yesterday evening, um, which put us under big pressure. Um, so that was disappointing to see. Um, because up to that stage, we, we, I thought we played really good test match. Yet. Being under pressure in the first innings, got a competitive score. Then I thought we bowled really well throughout the innings, the seamers and the spinners, uh, to get a lead. Um, and then just had a, a really terrible last session yesterday, which put us under a lot of pressure instead. Uh, Russell, uh, the team has made two major comebacks in this game. You have four down in the first innings, and then there was a big partnership uh, yesterday as, as well. I mean, the ball very well. Um, do, you, do you think that there is still time to, you know, make another major turnaround tomorrow? Look, um, it looks like all the wickets have fallen in the first sessions of, of most mornings, and, and I am really proud of the way the guys have fought back in this particular test match. <laughs> youngish team and they've, they've shown really good character. Um, cricket's a strange game. Uh, obviously, Pakistan are well in control at the moment, leading with the 95 runs, um, and it's going to have to take something really special, but um, that's test match cricket, anything's possible. We've got to go here tomorrow morning believing that we've still got a chance. If we can pick up two or three early in the first half an hour of the morning, anything's still possible. Um, so, whilst Pakistan are well ahead of the game at the moment, We've got to make sure we come here with uh, with really good attitude and skill tomorrow morning and, and believe that we can still do something really special tomorrow. Uh, Russell, um, about Luton, I mean, he scored 100 and then, you know, scored another 50 in this game. Uh, do you think he, uh, you know, this is this is his sort of, this is the sort of cricket we can expect from him uh, going forward as well? Well, I think if you look at uh, Luton's test, uh, Record over the last 18 months or so, I think he's averaging probably close to 60. Um, he's played some really good innings for us in the middle order, and I think we found a good spot at six or seven for him, um, which allows him to, to to bat a little bit with the lower order and, and get a little bit of confidence going. So, look, we, we always know that he's a fantastic player. Um, it's taken him a while to find his way in Test match cricket. But over the last year, year and a half, I think he's been really good for us and a big positive force in Test match cricket. And, Hopefully he's learned a lot um, in this last period of time, getting some big scores. Um, and hopefully he can, in time to come, slowly move himself up the order into where, where we think he could possibly end up betting. Um, still learning, still improving um, and finding his way. But maybe in another year's time, he could be the next number four or number five or whatever it's going to be for Bangladesh. I'm asking you uh, about our top order batters. They are failing in the two innings in a row. Yeah, look, it's been it's been disappointing. Um, uh, and Shadman's just come off 100 in his last test match, be it about six months ago. Um, but we are finding ourselves under under pressure against the new ball. Uh, we are against the quality bowling attack. Shadman and Saif are, are still, I mean, Saif's playing, I think, his fifth or sixth test match. So, so still very, very inexperienced. Shadman, I think, possibly played 10 and they're up against two high-quality bowlers. So, um, it's been tough for them. Um, I was, uh, yeah, obviously we weren't happy with the way they got out, um, considering the, the nature of the wicket we're playing. So that, that was a bit disappointing. Um, so there's a lot of work for them to do in Test Match Cricket, there's no doubt about it. Another question I have uh, in the next, ten, uh, next test, are you expecting Saki Hassan? I don't know. Um, I'm not too sure. I think he's done a a fitness test today, um, and uh, we will wait for the feedback from from the trainers and the physios um, later on today or tomorrow morning. Hi, Russell. Uh, Shohan obviously didn't have that much time to get ready mentally before going to the back, but uh, he started very well, was looking uh, positive, but the way he got out of the shorty page, how do you describe that? Yeah, very... Uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to criticise players uh, in media, but... Um, I thought we were starting to get some momentum. We were under 96 ahead at that stage, six wickets. And we thought if that partnership could just go for another 40 or 50 runs, um, we'd have Pakistan under pressure because then they'd have to bet maybe for an hour before close of play. And look, I'm sure if you ask someone, um, 
what you do with that ball, I'm sure he would not play that same shot. Um, obviously, he's let himself down with that dismissal um, because at that stage of the game, we just started to get what I thought was ahead of the game, 196 ahead, two batters in, we were getting into a good position and he knows he's let himself down and he's let the team down with that dismissal, there's no doubt about that. Hi, hi, Russell. Um... Just wondering, is there a sense of frustration in that you kind of hauled yourselves back into the game twice? Firstly, with that 200 partnership between Mushy and Litton, and then uh, actually ending up with a first innings lead when it was kind of looking unlikely at one stage, mainly due to uh, Tigers bowling. So, yeah, is there a sense of frustration that you haven't kind of made the most of those positions? No, absolutely. I'm, I'm not just frustrated with this particular test match, but if you think of our last couple of test matches, two against the West Indies that we probably should have won, got ourselves into great positions and just weren't able to, to seal the deal. Um, so I, I'm sure the players are as well all very frustrated but because we definitely seem to be making improvements in this format, but then just making silly mistakes at crucial stages, whether it's putting down a catch or playing a loose shot or bowling a bad spell, which just can't seem to sustain our performance for a longer period of time. That is very frustrating at the moment. Um, and so just, just, just to follow up on that, you know, yeah, is there a reason that you can pinpoint for that, you know, for that kind of lack of focus or lack of intensity? Okay. It's hard to pinpoint on it, but I think, I mean, our history in Test Match Cricket, I think they've probably won, we've won probably about 15 games in now, 130. So the, the understanding of what to do to win when the moment's there is probably not there and the belief's not quite there. I mean, and until somebody makes that step and does it in a high pressure environment, um, they're always going to be. Looking around for somebody else to do it. So, because they've because we've lost Bangladesh's history, the, the belief and the confidence to actually. So yeah, that, that is very disappointing. Positions in test matches this year. I think of the West Indies having them seventy for three, chasing nearly four hundred. I think it was chasing two twenty against West Indies it was seventy four. No wicket, we end up losing by ten runs. So we're just getting so close. I keep saying there's a massive improvement. I can see an improvement but just not able to sustain it for longer periods of time. And that is very frustrating. Maybe because I'm not sure, I haven't watched a lot of domestic cricket, but maybe um, uh, the, the competition or the, the intensity isn't quite there for long periods of time in domestic cricket, I'm not sure. Um, but there's, there's definitely a, short, a shortage of sustained pressure absorption and sustained applying of pressure in this format. Hi, Russell. Uh... Going back to Saif Hassan, um, he has been struggling so far in his short career. And uh, he, uh, whenever he went to the bat, every time he looked, uh, looked un uncomfortable. And his technique actually, uh, you know, seems exposed in the, against the top quality bowling. So I know you are not going to criticize your peers in the media, but uh, it's not about criticism. Listen, what's your observation about his batting so far in his short career? Look, I mean, um, Saif has shown some glimpses of, of what he's capable of. I mean, even in the second innings before he got out, he was starting to, to find a little bit of confidence and a little bit of form. But like I say, guys, I don't know uh, if Saif has faced that sort of intensity, that sort of pressure before. I know young Yasser Rabi, who played really well, came to me after the day's play yesterday and said, wow, he's never been involved in that sort of intense battle before on a cricket field. So... It's, it's, a new, it's, it's a new experience for a lot of these young players. Um, against quality sides like this, um, when the expectation is so high um, and some of the short falling shortcomings are definitely being exposed at this level at the moment. Um, and there's definitely lots of work to be done in that particular department for us. Prabir, can I say something? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you guys can ask me a few more questions if you want to. If there's anything you need clarity on, that's no problem. Talk to me. I haven't done a press conference for about six weeks. So if there's any questions you guys have asked, now's a good time to ask uh, if that's okay. 
Uh, I have a question, Russell. Then uh, just wanted to know, um, you know, uh, do you prefer this sort of wicket uh, at home? Who am I speaking to? Isam. Yes, yes. Isam, it's it's a, it's. A, I, th I think this has been a really good wicket, um, and uh, it's, it's 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 been a really good test match. Um, like I say, I think we've played really good test match cricket for periods of time where we've been on top in the game. Um, so, I, and I keep saying to my coaches, it's a very difficult situation Bangladesh is in because um, when we play on good wickets, we might not have the firepower to, to bowl sides out like Pakistan might have. Um, when we play on wickets that spin, We've definitely got the firepower to bowl sides out, but then our batsmen can be challenged as well. And if you want to try and develop confidence in our batting lineup, um, get our batting numbers up, our statistics up for players, their confidence levels, um, it's, a, it's a very tough situation because historically on, on good wickets, Bangladesh seem to struggle. Um, historically on spinning wickets, our, our, our batters seem to struggle. So it's a tough situation. To teach. And I think this has been a very good wicket. Um, we have let ourselves down in the second innings by being bowled out for 150. If we could get somewhere about 250, 280, we would have been in a great position. So, in my opinion, this has been a really good pitch. Um, and hopefully, the boys have learned a lot from this test match thus far. Hi, Russell. Um, so what is going on in Bangladesh cricket? The T20 team is uh, fully reshuffled and the test team is struggling. I don't know what uh, what will they do in the uh, one day format. And what is your observation, basic? So, um, second, I mean, I know I haven't spoken about the T20 World Cup much, um, but if you look at the, the five games we lost in the Super League, West Indies and Sri Lanka, we were probably in good positions to, to win those games. Then we ended up losing to England. Australia and South Africa, who were three fantastic sides. Um, and we ended up in those games, in two of those games, playing without, I suppose, three of our first choice players, without Shakib, um, without Saifuddin, um, and someone else was missing as well. There was a third player missing uh, in terms of injury. I'm trying to think who it was. Saifuddin. Um, Saifuddin. Um, and in the day, if you take three, if you take three players out of the Australian team, if you take three players out of the African team, if you take the Cock, Rabada, and Shamsi out, they too will probably feel a little bit thinner and a little bit more vulnerable. So, whilst we know we didn't play well, and we appreciate the the, the frustration with that performance, you've also got to put into context that we lost to three really good sides. We could have probably won two games against Sri Lanka and. The West Indies, we probably should have won those games. We actually played decently. We should have won those two. And then we lost three games against three powerhouse sides, missing three of our big players. It's no excuse. We know that. But it might not be all doom and gloom. Uh, I was extremely satisfied with the way the boys played in this T20 series against Pakistan. Um, a young side coming with a lot of pressure. Once again, we possibly could have won one or two of those games against Pakistan. So... I was very proud of the way the boys played in this last T20 series. But we've got to realize that we are uh, we are behind other teams in that particular format. And we need to make sure we've got enough depth to cover up when players like that are missing. To play Shakib, um, as you can see here, we are the one bowler light or we one batter light. And it's the same in, in the white ball cricket. And we need to try and find players who can fulfill that role um, when those players are not available. There's no doubt about that. Hello? Coach, you listening? I'm listening. Okay, thank you. Okay, obviously you had a plan against this test against Pakistan. What do you think the execution and the plan were similar as your expectation? Oh, look, every time you play an international game, you, you're hoping to, to win. Um, in terms of our planning, we wanted to bat well. We wanted, uh, we wanted to get a big score in the first innings. Um, we wanted our spinners to come to the game in the second innings. There's no doubt about that. Um, and for a large period of time, we were very much in contention and, and possibly ahead in the game. Um, and like I said earlier, we just haven't been able to sustain that sort of performance 
throughout the game. You've been good for two sessions and then one really bad session. Good for one session and then one average session. So just finding the team. Yeah, Nick, Next is, uh, sorry, Kisha, do you have a second question? No, okay. Uh, Bappi, your question, please. Coach, uh, I don't know if you have watched the Nagpur test between India and New Zealand. Where New Zealand last pair saved the match playing 8.4 overs. Similarly, Pakistan last two wickets added 46 runs in the first innings in this match. But we lost uh, four wickets in just four runs. Them happen in the first innings as well. What do you take on this? Do you have any plan for this? So, I mean, if you if you look at it, uh, we were 70 ahead and we had a big RBW shout was given not out. It showed umpire score. They added 30 runs there. Um, which cut our lead. And then you look at poor uh, Shadman gets an LBW shout, just clipping leg stump gets given out on score. The margins between win, a difference of four, Shadman is not good. If you look at statistically, we probably got the worst 10 and 11 in terms of batting run average, but it's not their job to be to be getting those sort of runs. We're hoping our top order will be able to release that pressure from them and we haven't been able to do that. So um, we know that 10 and 11 are not great batters for us, but they, that's not their job. Um, the job is for the top order to get some runs. Be great if we did have 10s and 11s who could contribute a bit more with the bat, but we don't have. Um, and we've just got to make sure our top order gets better to not put those guys under that sort of pressure. It is right that uh, this is not their job, but they, they did practice in the net, our lower order batsmen. <laughs> hey, oh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can, we can hear so did, 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 did you repeat that? Uh, uh, what I'm saying is the guys put in the effort in the nets, but practicing in the nets and facing a freebie uh, in the middle is two totally different things. So. You can only prepare as best as you can. Uh, there's nothing quite like the real match intensity when, when you're out in the middle for a test match. Hi, Russell. You probably got your contract extension uh, so far with hard. So, uh, congrats for that. And, and how do you assess your last two years here in Bangladesh? And what the future lies ahead? I mean, uh, what Bangladesh can, can, a cricket can expect from you? Oh, look, this. I've really enjoyed it. There's obviously some massive challenges. There's no doubt about it. Um, uh, I've, I've been involved with South Africa for a long time and um, South Africa have been a team that has, has won a lot of test matches in particular. It can be very frustrating at times in the test match format in particular where we, we just seem to not know how to win. Um, the, the test culture definitely needs to improve. There doesn't seem to be uh, and it's something we talk about all the time about making sure. I always believe if your test team is good, your white court teams will be good. Um, and maybe um, the current environment in Bangladesh, maybe white ball cricket is seen to be more important than test match cricket. So it's something that we need to continuously address. I firmly believe if your test match side is good, you will have a good enough players to play all formats of white ball cricket. Um, there's some exciting young players coming through, but we've got to be realistic that some of these young boys are still a long way off from where they need to be as international batsmen, uh, as international bowlers. Um, and the more hard cricket they play, whether it's domestically or whether it's on 18 tours, the better it will be for the national side. There's no doubt about it because the step up from domestic cricket to international cricket at the moment is a massive step up. Um, and that gap needs to be bridged and that's something that the Bangladesh Cricket Board needs to look at closely to make sure players coming into the national side can come in and impact the game and not find take a long time to find the feet to reach the because there's a big step up. Okay, I guess uh, that's all for today. Um, Russell, thank you. And thanks everyone thanks, for guys. joining in. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm done.